This video is just going to be taking a little look at the Panasonic HDC HS100. As you can see, it advertises very clearly that it uses three CMOS sensors, which is quite nice. The colors come out really well in this camcorder. As you can see on the side, it advertises the advanced optical image stabilization, which is really just their regular stabilization, but Panasonic generally does a good job at that, so I'm not really going to make too much of a comment on that. Right here is a switch between auto and manual. In manual mode, you can either control the focus or the zoom, or if you push this button, you've got the option of adjusting the white balance, the shutter speed, and the aperture slash gain. On the top, there's not a whole lot here. You get a little thing for the uh, built-in cold shoe. There's no pins on there, obviously, so it's just a cold shoe mount. This thing is supposed to be tethered to the camera, but the tether actually broke off, so I'll have to uh, super glue that on at some point. There's also a 5.1 channel surround sound microphone. The one thing that I really don't like about this microphone is that you cannot set it to be stereo. It only records 5.1 surround sound, so you will need a video editor that can handle that if you want to mix it down to stereo. Otherwise, you'll get bad peaking in the uh, left channel. You also get zoom slider and a two-position photo button, which is kind of unusual for a lot of Panasonic cameras. Although this one does have a flash, so I can see why they would do that. You need the first position to focus the picture before it actually fires the flash. Otherwise, you'd probably be firing it off accidentally all the time, which would really drain the battery. you also got these little buttons here for Intelligent Auto, which I never use, and Pre-Record, which I rarely use. On this side here, there's not really a whole lot. This is just where the uh, hard drive is. It's kind of an ugly design, but when your hand's over it, no one's going to really notice. Speaking of using hands, it's got a hand strap right here. It's a very nice hand strap. Although the adjustment is kind of the same as on their other camcorders, I'm guessing this is 2011 or 2012 just based off of this right here. Because this kind of adjustment was on another 2011 model Panasonic high def camcorder that I used to own. Correction now, I still own that camcorder, it's just that it's in pieces, so it's really good for nothing. On the back here, you've got battery, obviously, mode switch, and a circular record button. The only other camcorder that I've seen that on is on Sony's 2008 model hard drive camcorders where they've got the circular record button and a mode switch back here, although this one switches between pictures and videos instead of playback and recording. Also, interestingly enough, there's a switch to go between the viewfinder and the LCD. It does not switch between them automatically when you close the screen, and it doesn't give you both at the same time when you flip the screen around. It's either LCD or viewfinder, switchable by that little switch right there. On the viewfinder, it does not have any cushioning around it, and it does not pull out or tilt up. So basically, if you get a bigger battery on this thing and you want to use the viewfinder, tough shit, you're not using the viewfinder. You can see on the inside of the display here, you've got the place for the component and the AV headphone combo jack there, as well as a little thing to open up the SD card slot. It takes up to 32 gigs, I believe. And then you've also got your switch for the stabilizer, push button switch, a button to delete videos or pictures and playback, menu button, and a joystick. This does not use a touchscreen, which I really like. There's also a disk copy button, but honestly I've never used that on any camcorders that I've owned. Under the battery, you've got your DC input as well as your USB and HDMI interface. I can understand putting the USB interface under here because most Panasonic hard drive camcorders require that you have the camcorder powered with DC power to use that, but the HDMI being under here, I didn't understand that. I guess they just ran out of space or something like that. This wheel around the lens is really nice. Smooth movement, and you get a lot more range of movement than on camcorders that just use a little dial on the bottom left, like the one that I'm recording with. On the bottom of the camcorder, you get your uh, tripod mount with the locator pin. It uses a uh, metal tripod thread, so that's pretty nice. You also get the battery release lever and a little piece of rubber to help it stay in place. Other than that, there's not a whole lot to that. The one thing I like about the lens is that this part's really far recessed, so in 
really bright conditions, like on a sunny day, it's not going to give you a whole lot of lens flare issues unless you shoot directly into the sun, which why the hell would you do that, you lunatic? This gives you a selection of quality, and something I've noticed about Panasonic cameras, they're the only camcorders that I've ever seen where you can record below 10 megabits per second and get full 1920 by 1080 resolution. Canon, Sony, JVC, take notes. You also get this option right here to record uh, 24 frames per second. I believe it actually does record 24 frames instead of just doing some kind of a pull down technique so it looks a lot better and yeah you can actually shoot some kind of film on this camcorder I guess if you really want to. I would recommend going with something a little bit more professional though but hey that's just my personal opinion. This mic setup you don't get any option to set it to stereo all these modes use surround sound, but the focus mic uh, is supposed to emulate using like a shotgun microphone. Kind of like using one of those. Digital cinema color. What, could they not afford to license XV color? For anybody that's wondering, I've actually looked through the menus. There is no option to pull up color bars, which is kind of a shame, but whatever. So this is actually a pretty decent camcorder for the price that you pay. The only real downside is that it does not have an LED video illuminator, and the EVF right here is kind of useless. But overall, it's actually not a bad camcorder. Audio sounds pretty good, and if you've got a video editing program that can actually support that, it actually sounds alright. This doesn't look particularly pretty, but your hand's going to be over that, so it doesn't really matter. This thing's terrible in low light. But other than that, the video quality out of this thing's pretty, pretty freaking awesome. So, if you're looking for a decently cheap camcorder, you can actually find these on eBay for respectable prices. I got this one for $150 out of pocket, plus an extra $20 that I made off of a sale that was just kind of sitting in my PayPal account. Wait, what? I forgot to mention something! This thing has an external microphone jack right here right there. It's a standard 3.5mm plug. I don't think that it's powered. You would think that it being right there the cable would get in the way of the lens but it's so far back that it's gonna bump up against this or this before it gets in front of the lens. So if you want to use an external microphone with this camcorder you're good. Just make sure it's powered first. 